All right, chapter four, um, graphing quadratic functions. Chapter four is where we, you have seen chapter four before in 135. I will tell you that much, but um, I can also tell you that a lot of students have issues with uh, quadratic functions because it does require discipline. Uh, it does require that you actually try to master whatever it is. Now, the good news is uh, at this point, we are going to get about two lessons per week. And so I can't guarantee how sh that this presentation will be short but I can guarantee you only have two things to learn or two lessons to learn for the week. And so as long as you put your effort into those two lessons, as long as you find a efficient way to use your time, I think you should be okay for the end of the week. Um, the goal for today is direct. Uh, the problems are very repetitive, but the importance of information is high. By the end of this presentation, you should know the following things. Number one, how to find the key X. Number two, how to create a five point chart. Number three, how to find the Y intercept. Four, how to find the axis symmetry how to identify the maximum minimum value, and how to actually graph the parabola. Uh, oddly enough, every question in this list comes from the first two things on the list. So the key x and the five point chart are the two things. I would say make sure you write these things down because whatever you don't know, you want to come back and um, rewatch or you want to make sure you email me and say, hey, I know how to do all these things, but can you explain how to find the axis of symmetry or whatever it is that's going on? Um, but again, everything comes from that part, so we should know from our work with parent functions what a parabola looks like, and that is like this. So copy these general shapes as it is with the uh, low point somewhere around here and with the high point somewhere around here. Um, do make sure to put the axis in there uh, while you do that because there's a couple things that you want to label. First thing you want to label is the vertex. The vertex is this point here. So again your vertex is that point there it is the point that is at the highest or lowest of your parabola the axis of symmetry that is the line that actually cuts it in half and the interesting thing about it remember I told you that it comes from the, all the points your axis of symmetry goes through your vertex and so therefore I just put AOS but yeah, your axis of symmetry goes through your vertex. So again, if you can find your vertex, you found your axis of symmetry. Watch this. You want your maximum end value? Guess what? This is also your minimum point. This is also your maximum point. How do I know this is my minimum point? Because that is as low as the, as the, vert, as the parabola will go. How do I know this is my maximum point? Because that is as high as the parabola is going to go. And your y-intercept, that is the only thing that takes a little bit of work. Your y-intercept, of course, this is your y-axis. And so that is the point that you are looking for. I think that's somewhere around here. But either way, those are the main things you need to know. Um, when it comes down to the work we're going to be doing, typically if you can find the vertex, you found about everything you need. Um, y-intercept does come into play on a couple of things. Um, the axis of symmetry really doesn't, but they just like to ask it in the question, so you know I have to put it in your homework. So just make sure you know what you're doing on that. But again, those are the key things you're going to be looking at. So let's just go ahead and get to the information for the day. The general formula for quadratic equation is this, so write that down. And the formula for the key, and I say it's the key because think about a key. If you want to go out of town, guess what you need to start the car? Also to lock your door, also to do any other thing. You need the key. So the key x is x equals negative b over 2a. Now this is a formula, but in the end you should kind of have it memorized. You just take the opposite of b and you double a and that would be the key x that you need. So again, that key x gives us everything because the key x leads us to our vertex. If it leads us to our vertex, it leads us to our axis of symmetry, it leads us to our minimum, it gives us a whole lot of information from just that key. So again, just kind of keep that in mind as we're going forward that unless you memorize that formula, I hope you wrote it down, um, everything else takes care of itself. Uh, once you find the key, the five point chart gives you the rest of the information. Let's look at a couple of examples before sending you out for practice. Uh, create a five point chart for the equation, then identify the y-intercept, the vertex, the axis of symmetry, etc., etc., etc. So five point chart first. What I want to do is identify that a is 3, b is 24, c is negative 5. Now you don't need to do that, 
but I suggest you do that because we are going to be getting into a lot of things where A, B, and C are important, and so it kind of helps for you to learn to identify it. Again, A is what's attached to X squared, B is what's attached to X, C is the number all by itself. And so I know that my key X is negative B over 2A, which means take the opposite of B, which is negative 24, over twice A again here. I'm sorry, twice A, I was about to say that's not going to be a good answer. Twice A would be 6. Again, notice I didn't need to really plug it in. You're Algebra 2, 136 student. I think you're good enough to do it. If not, feel free to go ahead and put negative parentheses, whatever, and 2 parentheses, 3. But again, negative B over twice A, which is negative 4. Once I find that, put your key X in the center of your chart. From there, it does not matter what direction you go but connect it with the numbers that surround that key X. So notice it goes 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Keep the numbers in order. You could go negative 6, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2. It really does not matter. The key thing now is that you need to have a calculator or use the online calculator and go ahead and type in your numbers. So 3 parentheses negative 2 squared plus 24 parentheses negative 2 uh, minus 5. And you are getting to the point now to where it's important that you understand how to pro use whatever tool you have. Uh, on this calculator, the recall function is by hitting the up arrow. So if you have the TI-30X or 36X, hitting the up arrow will pull will actually highlight what you want to copy because I don't want to have to type that in five times. You then hit enter to copy it. And then you can go back and change your numbers. Uh, negative three. But you need to always learn to play around with your calculator to try to figure out what it is that is going on because the recall function is one of the most important functions to use, especially as you get further and further into math. Um, because a lot of the stuff you do, as I said in the beginning of this, is repetitive and you do actually have to keep typing things in. And it does help whenever you're doing something like this to keep you from having to type it in and worry about doing something wrong. Now here is the point. If I type it in wrong the first time, then all my answers will be wrong. So you need to make sure you're also paying attention to that. But as long as you take your time on the first, the rest of it should take care of itself. Also, there's some other buttons we're going to learn to press. But again, I try to make sure that I teach you that part. The key thing you want to understand about your five-point chart, because this is symmetric, and if you can't draw these lines, then you did it wrong. Now, where would you mess up? One place you mess up, please listen, and you might want to write these down for spots of error if these don't match. One thing is, did you type it in correctly? Another thing is, did you switch B? Because what people tend to do is they tend to actually put B over 2A, which then gives me the opposite of what that is. And of course, if you don't pick the proper key, it's not going to happen. So like I said, just make sure you're ready for that. Anyway, you want the vertex. I'm sorry, they want the y-intercept first. That's pretty easy. Remember that y-intercept from our, I think it was working chapter one, maybe chapter two, I have no clue. But I do know that y-intercept meant ignore x. So that means take this away, take that away. Look at what's left over. Some people want you to put 0, comma negative 5. Some people want you to put y equals negative 5. Just make sure you understand again that that negative 5 is your number. Y-intercept means ignore x, so take that away and take that away. In other words, put zeros in there and you end up with y equals negative 5. That's not so hard to find. Your vertex, once you have all this, is also not hard to find. Your vertex is the center of your table, which is negative 4, comma, negative 53. They want the axis of symmetry. Guess what that is? The axis of symmetry is a vertical line. Remember that the vertical line from if I hope you remember from chapter two or three, whatever it was that we graphed, is a x equals. What is x in your axis of symmetry? It's x equals negative four. Now, here's how I remember the axis of symmetry, and you feel free to do it however you want. But again, I've been teaching for longer than you've been alive, and I try to make sure that anything that works I remember. The axis of symmetry axis has an x in it which means you're going to use the x all right so again axis of symmetry when you say it you obviously have to say x axis so axis 
axis, however you want to think about it, but your axis of symmetry is always your x line, so x equals whatever x is, and then the last thing they ask you for is the max or minimum value. Well, here's the thing you need to know. Notice negative 41 goes to negative 53, then back to negative 41. The question is, is this the highest or lowest? So all you got to do is compare this number to that. Remember that negatives are opposite, which means that this would be a low point, so it is a minimum value of y equals negative 53. Again, they might want you to put uh, 0, negative 53, just adjust to whatever the computer wants. Again, the key thing is um, that you understand the material, and as long as you practice on your homework, for, again, for those of you who did the homework this quarter, you realize that the test questions come straight from your homework, so as long as you practiced it, you understood. You also understand that whenever you type something in, in a different format, that I gave you those points back. So. Just make sure you understand it because as long as you've got the right number, I am going to fix that for you on your assessment. So that's the main thing. Another five point chart here. Again, first thing I want to do is identify A, which is negative 2, B, which is 8, C, which is 6. My key X is negative B over 2A, which means take B and switch it. Double A. I get 2. And so x, y, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2 goes here. 1, 0, 3, 4. Take your calculator. I'll even do it on the graphing calculator if you have that. Then you can learn how to do your recall on that also. Again, every calculator has some, every good calculator has a recall function. I don't have Casio's, but if you don't know, send me a picture of your Casio. I will try to find out how to do the recall on that. But like I said, just... Whatever it is, if you ask for help, again, I am I am here to help you as, if you have not figured that out. Uh, zero squared. I know it seems stupid that I'm plugging this in because the answer should just be 6 because the zero should make those go away. But I'm plugging this in so it's ready to be programmed. So 2x squared plus 8 parentheses 0 plus 6, which of course is 6. If you're using the graphing calculator, your recall function is second, enter. Now, unfortunately, you can't go up any more than that one, but again, now that lets you go back, change your zeros into ones. I believe on the computer thing that I showed you, uh, you just kind of click on the number and change it. So, again, whatever it is, just make sure you understand how to do what you need to do. Second, enter. But again, you have to master whatever you are working with. It does not matter what calculator you have. It matters how good you are with your calculator. I got through, I want to say, to my first semester of calculus with a very cheap, actually, hold on real quick. The calculator I used to get me through the calculus was cheaper than this. And that's not a cheap calculator, but it at least lets you recall. The one I had wouldn't even let you type equations in. It literally was an old-fashioned calculator. But as long as you know how to work the calculator that you're working with, you'll be fine. Again, how do I know I got my five point chart correct? Because my rainbow is there. Now we look for all the other stuff. So you want the y-intercept. Again, y-intercept means ignore x. Take that away, take that away. We are left with either y equals 6 or 0, 6. Again, I'm not sure how they want that on each question because sometimes they change. Uh, they want the vertex. Remember your vertex is the middle point which is 2 comma 14. They want the axis of symmetry, axis, axis, which would be the x, which means that we want x equals 2. Uh, they want the maximum minimum value. Well, again, looking at this thing here, 6, 12 to 14. 14 seems to be the high point, so it is a maximum of x equals, I'm sorry, y equals 14, because your maximum or minimum is a y value here. Again, in terms of your chart, x goes this way y goes that way. So maximum will be how high it goes, which means it is a y value. Again, anytime you're talking maximum, <laughs> I know it kind of messes up with the axis of symmetry, but your maximum value is going to always be the y value that is in the vertex. All right. One more thing. There is an application for, um, sorry, I'm not pulling this down far enough. My zoom is terrible on this video. I'll fix it for the next one. There's an application for the shape of a parabola in word problems. Just keep in mind the key x typically is needed to find your answer. So I just told you how to answer any kind of word problem with a um, par parabolic shape. It's typically going to be found using the key x. So a birdhouse company earns a weekly profit according to this function, where x is the number of bird feeders bought and sold. 
I am assuming that f of x is your profit because they're talking about your profit amount. So x is bird feeders, this is profit. Make sure before you get into it, you kind of understand what everything means. They want the number of bird feeders that the company must sell to obtain a maximum profit. Think about this. Maximum. Isn't maximum that point that is at the top of the vertex? And that point is found by finding the vertex. So we need to identify A, which is negative 0 0.40, B, which is 80, and C, which is negative 200. My key X is negative B, which is negative 80, over twice that, which is negative 0 0.8. I believe the trick you can do with decimals is moving it over one and I believe that is 100. And so my key X is 100. Uh, let's find the Y that goes with it by just plugging it in really quickly. So negative uh, 0.40 times 100 squared plus 80 times 100 minus 200 equals 3800. So that goes with your numbers there. So these two numbers have to have something to do with your maximum. So it says find the number of bird feeders that they must sell. Well which one represents bird feeders? X. So the number of bird feeders is 100 feeders. That would be your answer to A. The question, I'm sorry, <laughs> I can't see it all the time. The question for B says find the maximum profit. Well what represents profit? Is that number which is Y. So therefore your profit is 3800 bucks and that's that now these are going to get more complex so make sure you try to do as much mastery as possible with this because again um, everything builds on itself in this class and if you don't feel if you don't get to the point where you need to be at least mostly understanding then when everything starts to stack together it's going to really confuse you so again make sure you make the most out of this assignment it does have some tough questions on it but that's because you're only doing two sections per week and plus it's time to really start getting down to what we're here for so um, it is going to be a challenge if you ask for help please send a picture of your work uh, I still keep people still have people who are sending me the thing that it'll say like uh, correct answer incorrect answer and it'll say like the correct answer is 6.5 you put 7.1 and their question is what did I do wrong I don't know like I'm not smart enough to know where that came from I'm not smart enough to know where that came from but if you show me your work and I can say hey did why did you put this number here or that number there I can fix it so please if you ask for help let's start doing things the right way please make sure you send me a picture of your problem of your work uh, so make sure you do that make sure you take care of business and uh, other than that I'll talk to you later. Don't forget to answer that question at the end of the um, video. Good luck.